Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And what lesson do we have today? Well, the lesson we have today comes from, and I've got my cheat monitor down here, it comes from the dailymail.co.uk. That's right, it's an online newspaper from the United Kingdom. You think, well, why would we be going to the United Kingdom? Well, sometimes they report things that the uh, American newspapers won't report or the American news organizations just kind of don't touch. And uh, this one right here says a woman, the title, woman choked and raped by ex-boyfriend after dispatcher informs her there are no cops to help and instead tells her to ask the attacker to leave. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the dispatcher informed the, uh, the woman here, the victim, who's psycho ex-boyfriend who'd already assaulted her and put her in a in, in the hospital a week prior the guy's beating on her door she calls 911 they say we don't have an officer available to come help you uh, and they transfer her the original county transfers her to the state police department and the state police say we don't have anyone available Ask him to leave. That's right. You heard it right. Well, he didn't leave. What he did was the uh, scumbag broke into the house and uh, choked and raped this uh, woman while she was waiting for help to arrive. Now, a lot of people out there are probably horrified by this story, and as you should be. But you may be horrified for the wrong reason. Well, number one... A, any kind of a, an assault or rape or sexual assault like that should horrify you. It's, it's a terrible thing. And it's also terrible that this, uh, that this scumbag in question here uh, already had, a, there was a restraining order against him. And according to the story, there was already an arrest warrant out for this guy. Well, what does that tell us? Number one, uh, when I was a police officer, people would talk to me about, uh, protection, civil protection orders or restraint orders or what things like that. And I said, look, all a restraint order is, is a piece of paper that says that this person can't come, you know, near you. When you know, a restraint order is like, well, when they come to rab rob you and rape you and stab you to death, hold up the restraint order and, and maybe that'll stop them. No. All a restraint order does is it gives the prosecutor one more charge to put on the guy when he's eventually arrested and jailed. That's all a restraint order does. It does not protect you. It does not keep you safe. If we could stop crime by issuing out writs or pieces of paper, then don't you think we would just do that? Everyone in America would get a piece of paper that said, it is hereby unlawful to rape or murder me, says this piece of paper. That's going to keep me safe. No. Papers don't keep you safe. How about 911? Does 911 keep you safe? We've been down this road before, but here we are again. 911 is there to get help on the way. It's there to get help moving towards you. It's not there to instantaneously save your life. And if you live out in the county, you know, if you live not in a you know metropolitan area, or even if you do live in a metropolitan area, dialing 911 does not mean that a police officer is going to materialize in 30 seconds on your front porch to deal with your problem. It just doesn't work that way. And it, it's amazing to me that adults in the United States of America still think that, well, I don't need to do anything, I don't need guns or fire extinguishers or first aid kits or medical training or anything all i need is my handy dandy phone and if there's ever a problem i'll call 911 i'll set the phone down and poof the genie will send someone to help me that's not reality folks and people are really dogging you know online they're dogging on this uh, the state this happened in oregon they're dogging on the county they're like how irresponsible is that and they need more money no doesn't matter how much money is available in the budget. There will never be enough money to put a sheriff's deputy at the end of your driveway every day, all day. It's not going to happen. You have to take responsibility for yourself. This, take, this very story takes me back to when I was a police officer and I would frequently deal with domestic violence victims. 
And I remember specifically one woman who lived in my jurisdiction, who had a crazy ex-husband, she was afraid of him, so forth. I got dispatched to her house because he had called and threatened her on the phone. Okay, I take the report, yada, yada, yada. I'm, I, you know, do the whole thing, do my report, and I ask her. I say, you know, do you have secure locks, you know, such and such. Yes, I do, you know. She didn't have a dog. And I said, do you own a gun? Thinking, well, if she's really afraid of her crazy ex-husband, she should probably have a gun in the house. And what did she tell me? Well, no, I'm, I'm not really comfortable around guns. Well... I, you know, I, 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 hard, I find a hard time. She was an adult American woman. She could have legally gone to the store, purchased a gun, got some training, and kept it in the house. She could have done that. But instead, she tells me, I'm not comfortable around guns. But what she was comfortable doing is getting on the phone, calling me, and telling me to come over. Well, yeah, if, if your husband shows up and I'm on duty, I'll come over and I'll deal with the situation, but I can't be here all the time. I have other stuff to do. Uh, police officers, you know, if, if you live out in the county and there's something going on and the two deputies that are on duty are in the far eastern part of the county and you live in the far western part of the county and someone's smashing in your door, they just can't get there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not taking the steps to secure your own safety, I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's dogging on the, the cops here. but And when it comes down to it from a, a practical and a legal standpoint, the state, which is represented by the sheriff's office, the police department, the state police, and so forth, the state does not have the legal responsibility to protect you as an individual. They have the responsibility to recheck, to protect you, excuse me, as a whole, the community as a whole, but they do not have the responsibility or a legal obligation to protect you as an individual. It does not exist. You may hope that it does or wish that it does, but it doesn't. It's just not the way it works. So if you learn nothing else from this particular instance, you need to be aware of the fact that Sometimes you got to help yourself. Now, if you're an, if someone is an invalid, they're in a wheelchair, they're handicapped, you know, they can't help themselves. Okay, I got you. They need someone to help them. But if you're a physically fit adult American, for Pete's sake, take steps to provide for your own safety. Dial 911, put the phone down, say there's a guy trying to break in, come quickly, and then grab your freaking gun, and if they bust down the door, do what you have to do. But the word, I mean, I can't even imagine the thought process is, well, I have a phone. Stop. Stop. Don't, don't, you know. What, what are you thinking? All right, Americans, it's time to harden up because... You really, you don't have another other choice. You can either harden up or you can continue to be a victim. That's it. Our recommended product today is uh, something really cool that I just actually got my hands on. It's called the Frog Lube Complete Weapons Cleaning System. We'll put the link up for you guys right below there. But uh, Frog Lube was actually developed by uh, a guy who I just recently met. He is a retired U.S. Navy SEAL, and uh, he kind of accidentally discovered this product. And it was funny, as the product itself was not originally designed for gun cleaning. It was designed for industrial use. And being a, a SEAL, he said, man, I bet you, you could use this product. I bet it would work really well on firearms. And so... There you go. He developed the Frog Lube Cleaning Kit product. Uh, and if, so if you want to check it out, we'll put the link up for you right down there. Designed by a former SEAL or owned, you know, developed by a former SEAL. And uh, it, from so far, I've been using it and I'm impressed with it. Uh, it's a green liquid. You put it on your firearms. It keeps them from rusting. It keeps them lubricated. It keeps them running. So check it out. Frog Lube. And like I said, we'll put the link up for you down below. Now, for all things student of the gun, what are you going to do? Well, obviously, you're going to go to studentofthegun.com.